some Corvette excitement this week. Our donor vehicle for the battery has showed up. I got it sitting on my car trailer and it's pretty smashed up. There's not a straight body panel left on this thing. So I'm gonna somehow get it off the trailer, pushed into the shop, get her up on the hoist and yank this battery out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be pretty open about this build. There's a lot of guys that, if you watch much YouTube channels and you're checking out EV conversions, there's not a lot of information on what they have done to the cars, components they've used, so on and so forth, but um, there's no reason for that. I don't know why you can't be open and honest with everybody. So I'm gonna be pretty transparent about this process, show you guys all of the stuff that component-wise that we will be using um, and share some of the thinking along with that. So first step is, get this battery down on the floor, and then I'm gonna share some specs with you and uh, what the game plan is from here. Well, I find myself in the same situation as always. I got this thing pushed into the shop and up on the hoist. I thought, ah, I'm just gonna try a couple of bolts on this and see what I'm in for. An hour later, the battery's sitting on the floor with the top off of it, and I didn't record any of it. But I will say, it was only about, um, I think 24 fasteners around the perimeter of it, four going up through the center, coolant lines on the front. These are your high voltage connections at the back side of the battery. And uh, yeah, literally an hour later, this thing is sitting on the floor. I can get this up. Here's the floor. So just the perimeter. That's the front over there. Perimeter bolts. The car does have a full floor in it and fairly straightforward. Pretty quick process, actually. First impressions. Man, I like this battery. I'll put a link in the description and uh, maybe at the end of this video, but the last battery that we took apart was the Model Y 4680. Even though they're both batteries, they couldn't be more polar opposites. That 4680 battery was completely unserviceable and every single aspect of this battery appears to be serviceable. So sitting on the floor there, that's one of the modules. This is the shorter range pack. There is nine of these modules. Each of those modules are available directly from the Volkswagen dealer. So anything in here that ever had a problem could be taken apart and serviced. There's no need to throw out the entire battery pack unless it had some sort of major physical damage. High voltage contactors in the back. So this is the rear of the pack. So underneath these, these are your positive and negative contactors. That yellow thing is the pyro disconnect. Beside that is two current shunts, positive and negative contactors. There's some temperature sensors in there, BMS modules, all pretty slick, everything within the pack. Very serviceable. Compared to that last 4680 Tesla pack that we pulled apart, this is an entirely new approach, or a better approach, I will say. 
Everything in here is completely serviceable. So from the front side of the pack, there's the coolant connections. This entire bottom is just a chill plate. So these modules are cooled from the bottom side only versus the Tesla has the ribbon cooling throughout the, the canister cells. Now, I believe they started in 2022. Ours is a 2023 version um, with the packs being pretty similar. So I'm just gonna share the specs. I'm gonna read these so I don't screw this up. The pack that we have is the short range. So it's from the pro version, I believe. It is 62 kilowatt hours. They did offer a long range version and it was 82 kilowatt hours. Now within those two battery packs, you could get um, the earlier ones came with all LG chem cells and some of the short range ones came with LG or SK modules. Our version has the SK modules and I think the only difference that makes is the SK modules have a slightly higher charge rate for DC charging. Um, other than that, I think they're very similar. So ours is the nine module pack. The Volkswagen does run 400 volt architecture. We're gonna be running it on Tesla drive. So we technically need 355 volts nominal voltage. So what I'm gonna do is take the nine module pack, remove a module, so we'll be left with eight modules and then build a custom case for all of these modules to fit into. So the specs are as follows. Every module is 24 cells. In the short range pack, they are 12 series, two parallel. And that gives us a nominal voltage of 44.4 volts each pack. So where the big difference is, is the long range pack is also 24 cells. It is eight series and three parallel and has a individual module voltage of 29.6 volts. So that's how they get both packs equaling 400 volts with different numbers of modules in them. So by our math, we are going to need 355 volts. So that is eight modules will get us that nominal voltage, no problem. What that does do is, I'm gonna just calculate this. Each module is 6.8 kilowatt hours a piece. So if our original pack at 400 volts, nine modules was 62 kilowatt hours, if we ran eight modules, 355 volts, then our final pack will be 54 kilowatt hours. Cool, with that uh, battery pack out and one of the modules stripped out of it, I'm gonna get a good solid model built of those modules and then start my CAD work for this custom pack. Um, I'll kind of keep you, I'll try to keep you updated with the pack as best I can. Um, next video in the series is hopefully going to be either some CAD work or it'll be the body of the vet. We did get it back from the soda blasters and it is headed off to the paint shop. So maybe I'll uh, give you a quick rundown of what that looks like before it gets off to the body shop and we don't see it for a little while. All right, thanks for following along.